South Victoria respectfully acknowledges the traditional custodians of the country throughout Victoria where our activities take place today. We pay our respects to elders both past, present and emerging and continue to recognise and embrace the important continuous history and connection to land and community of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders people. Welcome to Scout Quest everyone. I'm Pete from Second Hawthorne Scout Group and I'm a Venturous Scout. Tonight we are excited to catch up with Savan from Headspace and Bendio Community Health to talk to us about Are You OK Day, which is today. A conversation can change a life. Are You OK Day was created to inspire and empower people to have meaningful connections with the people around them and start a conversation with those in the world who may be struggling. You don't need to be an expert to reach out, just a good friend and a great listener. Use these four steps to prompt you to have a conversation that could help change a life. Ask the person if they're okay. Listen, be an active listener and make sure that you're willing to listen to them. Encourage action after you have listened to them. Check in from time to time and make sure that you stay on top of being with them. Let's welcome Siobhan to talk to us about Are You OK Day today. Thanks for joining us, Siobhan. Hi, Pete, and hello, everyone. Thanks so much for inviting me to come along and talk to you all tonight. Um, I'm super excited to be here. Great. Let's get started, Siobhan. Yep. First thing is we'll just do a little bit of housekeeping just to get started. So firstly, if today gets too much, it is really important to talk to someone or get support following this talk tonight. And secondly, if you need a water break or just a break at all, please free to do so at any time. And thirdly, we'll have time for questions at the end. So if you have any throughout, just keep them in mind and you can ask them at the end and we will answer them as best we can. So what we are going to be talking about today is, is we're going to be talking about Are You OK Day, which is um, today, which is really exciting. And second is how you can ask a friend if they are okay. Thirdly, Headspace services and what um, Headspace is. And fourth is how you can look after your own mental well-being. So that's what we're going to be chatting about today. So a little bit about me before we get into further topic today is I'm a health promotion officer at Bendigo Community Health Services or BCHS. Um, that's located in Bendigo. I also work with the whole community and especially young people and help them with the, not only their physical health, but all aspects of their health, so their mental, mental as well. My job is super awesome because I get to work with so many different people, including Headspace. My work and Headspace, we work together really closely in Bendigo to support young people and their mental health. I will talk a little bit more later about Headspace and their services and what they provide to young people in Bendigo and Australia wide. So I also enjoy spending a lot of time with my friends and family and I also have a dog named Ivy. I live in Atuka, which is the Yorta Yorta country and you can see there on the slide picture of the um, Murray River which I live near. So to start off with, to get everyone thinking about mental health and getting our thinking caps on and making sure you're all paying attention today. I have a bit of a quick quiz, true or false for you all. So I hope everyone is competitive as I am and you get ready to get on those keyboards and put in your answer for this true or false question. I've only got one question. So I hope everyone can participate and put in your answer. So the question is, is true or false? Asking for help when you're feeling down or struggling is bad for your mental health. So I hope you can all put it into the chat. Your answer, true or false, asking for help when you're feeling down or struggling is bad for your mental health. So hopefully we've got some answers coming through. We've got some false people, people saying false, false. Majority are saying false. That's really good to see all everyone's answers. Lots of answers coming in. Majority are still saying false. Yep, 
give you a couple more seconds to put in your answers. What do you think, true or false? Asking for help when you're feeling down or struggling is bad for your mental health. Or false, which is good. So drum roll, please. The answer is, the answer for this true or false question is false. So asking for help or speaking to someone is really important for your mental health. It is especially important if you're feeling anxious or worried or sad. Just talking to someone can be really helpful and make you feel a lot better. Good. Great to see everyone putting in the answers. So we're going to talk now about Are You OK Day, which is today. So today is National Are You OK Day. You may have seen a lot of yellow around today. People may be wearing the colour yellow or there might be just some events happening, whether at your school or around your community or your town. So Are You OK Day is a charity um, whose mission is to inspire and empower everyone to connect with the people around them and lend support when they are struggling with life. Their tagline is a conversation can change a life because having a meaningful conversation can help people through difficult times in their lives. The research done by Are You OK Day has shown that conversations can make a difference when someone is struggling. It's better to ask than not to ask. Checking in with someone can help them feel more connected, supported and better about themselves and their situation. Young people are more likely to, to speak to their friends and family first. That's why it's so important that everyone is prepared and knows what to do if they are worried about someone they know. So when to ask, are you okay? It's the most important thing you can do is to trust your gut. If you notice a change or just feeling that someone, something's not quite right with your mate or someone you know, take the time to have a meaningful conversation. However, some signs that may show someone might need an are you okay conversation is they might withdraw from family or friends, get angry or really upset, especially with people they care about, cry or become really emotional um, around those that they care about. And they might lose interest in activities and things that they usually love. They could also become eating more than usual or even eating less. So if you notice any of these signs in someone you know, it, it might tell you that they need, they need your support. So how can you have a conversation? How can you ask, are you okay? It can be really hard to ask someone how they're feeling, but by just asking and being there for someone to, to, to talk to and can, can do a world of difference for that person who may be struggling. There are some tip, great tips that you can follow when you're asking someone if they are okay. As you can see in the slide, the, the steps are first ask, are you okay? If it's um, in a comfortable place, you can ask the person either online or face to face and just start by asking either how are you? Um, I've noticed you're not being yourself lately. Is everything okay? The second step is to listen. So make sure not to jump in or rush the person, but don't, try just to listen and remind yourself that your support can be really crucial. The third step is encourage action. You could say, what can I do to help? Have you spoken to anyone else about what's been happening or how you've been fe feeling? You might want to suggest that they can talk to a trusted adult or they might want to talk, talk to a family member or a friend or a teacher, um, whoever they trust. They could also suggest to talk to an online free support like Kids Helpline or eHeadspace. The final step is check in. So after you've had this conversation, make sure you stay connected and keep checking in. You might organize another time to hang out or talk on the phone again or do something fun together. You might want to ask when you, when you catch up again, you just, you just want to check in and to see how they're doing. If the person is still not doing okay after you, in your check in, you might want to encourage them to talk to someone else, another trusted person they could um, get support from. Remember, th remember, these four steps um, can help you have the are, are you OK conversation. So we're going to um, play a video now which will um, put these four steps into action and be able to show, demonstrate how they, how they work. Alec and Jenny like having fun at school. 
Though Alex noticed Jenny has been sad lately. We want him to be a good friend and ask, are you okay? Alex should follow the four conversation steps. Ask, are you okay? Alex should pick a comfortable place and in a quiet voice, ask Jenny how she is going. He can mention he is her friend and tell her that he has noticed she looks sad. Listen. Alex should listen carefully to what Jenny says without talking over her. Encourage action. Alec can help Jenny think of a trusted adult she can speak to about her feelings, like a teacher or a parent. Check in. Alec should ask Jenny how she is a few days later. If Jenny doesn't want to talk to him, he can suggest she talk to another friend, brother, sister or trusted adult. If you're worried about a friend, it's okay to have a conversation. Just remember the four steps. Ask, listen, encourage action and check in. Alec can be a good friend and so can you. Are you okay? Great. So um, if you want more information about Are You OK Day or to see more of their videos on tips of how you can have the conversation, um, you can visit their website at www.areyouok.org.au. So we're going to move now um, along to what supports are available to young people um, across Victoria. So there are a number of supports, including Kids Helpline, which I know that you've had a few um, Scout Quest um, around Kids Helpline um, at the start of August, which is great. Another support available for young people is Headspace and eHeadspace. Um, the number of the Headspace Bendigo is um, on, the, on the slide there and also for the eHeadspace um, number is there as well. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about these two amazing services available to young people across Victoria and Australia. Um, in my role at Bendigo Community Health Services, I have the privilege to work alongside lots of the Headspace staff in Bendigo and be able to go to events and help the community and do a lot of education with them. So it's really good. Um, yeah. So what is Headspace? So Headspace is a national youth mental health foundation. They provide mental health support to young people aged 12 to 25. Headspace Bendigo is operated by BCHS, so Bendigo Community Health Services. Um, Headspace Bright can support young people with counselling, um, group programs, community events and activities. They also provide mental health education and support groups and Headspace centres are located all over Australia. So we have a video to show you of what the inside of um, Headspace Bendigo looks like. So we're going to play that for you now. Hi everyone, it's Belle here from Headspace Bendigo. Welcome to our centre. Follow me inside and I'll give you a tour. So once you're inside, make sure you're wearing your mask and you sanitise your hands and then come this way. So you'll walk up and check in with our lovely receptionist and then once that's done, you'll come and wait in the waiting room over here. So while you're waiting, your mental health clinician will come and get you and you'll join them in their office. We have six different consult rooms which are all fresh and bright and have different furniture in them for you. So here at Headspace Bendigo, we offer a lot of services that can help everyone. These include mental health services, physical health services, alcohol and other drug services and even vocational programs. We can help you look after your mental health with some mental health clinicians and social workers. We also help you look after your physical health with GPs and sexual health nurses. We can help you gain employment and help you with your education through our vocational programs. And finally, we can help you navigate through alcohol and other drugs with our alcohol and other drug nurses too. And every service here is free. Headspace Bendigo provides services to young people who identify as Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander, culturally diverse and LGBTIQA+. All services at Headspace Bendigo are confidential and what that means is that the, what you discuss with your Headspace worker stays between yourself and the Headspace worker unless we think that you have some safety issues in which case we'll talk to your parents, teachers or trusted guardians. 
The easiest way to make an appointment to see someone at Headspace Bendigo is to pick up the phone and call 5406 1400. Or you can jump online to our website, click on the referral form and fill out your details. And then someone will be in contact with you to make your first appointment. With the current COVID climate, a lot of our appointments may be via telehealth. So this can be via the phone or over video chat. So thanks for joining us on our tour today. We hope this gave you a greater insight for what we do here at Headspace Bendigo. And don't forget, if you're walking by, feel free to pop in and say hello. We'd love to get to know you. Thanks. Great, so that was just a little video to show you what the Headspace Bendigo Centre looks like. Um, so Headspace is a national service and they have sites all across Australia where young people can go and access the many services that they provide, including counselling. So as you can see on the slide that there are services all over Australia. And if you want to see if there's a Headspace near you, you can visit their website and use the locator. However, if there isn't a Headspace near you, um, and you may prefer to use online services, the eHeadspace um, has amazing tools and um, access to online support for young people as well. So eHeadspace is the um, online space and phone support for young people. As you can see, there's the um, telephone line there that you can call for support um, from 9am to 1am, seven days a week, and you'll have one-on-one -on -one support with the clinician. There's also group chats available every week. There's also spaces um, where you can make your own account and create a place where you can collect and manage resources to build your own personalized mental health toolkit. You can download this on your phone so you can access it any, anywhere and any time. So this is for young people and family and friends. And you can also, um, so how you access eHeadspace, you just go onto the Headspace website. So another great service that Headspace support um, provide is the digital work and study support. So this is um, during um, these uncertain times, um, it can be really, you can help to talk to someone. With COVID-19 restrictions in place, your work or study might have abruptly changed, leaving you feeling increasingly anxious or unsure about your future. So if you are 15 to 25, the team of qualified work and study specialists can help you during this uncertain time. So they can help you with understanding your strengths, skills and abilities, navigating Centrelink or other government support options, job seeking skills and tools, career planning and advice, resume and job application support, study and enrollment support, support transitioning from school to work or further study, and balancing your mental health and well-being with your work or study. So Headspace also provide um, a service um, so they have GPs, so doctors um, in every site, in every Headspace site. So a lot of young people don't know this, that all, yet yeah, all sites across Australia have a GP or a doctor, and it is a free service for anyone who has a Medicare card. Um, Headspace also provides support for the LGBTIQA plus young people in the community. They have diversity groups where you can join others in a safe and inclusive space. So this is one of um, Bendigo um, Headspace um, Marie, the diversity worker there um, at a Pride Festival event. So some of the campaigns that Headspace National are working on include Together We've Got This, which is a campaign to encourage Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people to seek support. You can form, find more out about this on the Headspace website. So all of us at Bendigo Community Health Services and Headspace Bendigo love working together and meeting young people in the community for events and hearing what your mental health support young people need. So it's all about Headspace. Um, hopefully that's given you some um, new information that you might have not heard before and hopefully you might get on and have a look at the Headspace um, website to find out more about the services. So we want to now, I guess, finish off with thinking about your own well-being um, and making sure that you're looking after your own mental health. So a great tool, um, even though today has been check about checking in with your friends and family, it's, um, we want to make sure that you are all okay as well. So it's um, 
this is a great tool that you can use. It's called the Five Ways to Wellbeing. And it's a great tool that you can use anytime um, to help improve your mental wellbeing and improve your happiness and, the, and the, get those feel good emotions. So the five ways to wellbeing is five simple things you can do every day. And they are keep learning. So those actions can include learning new things like such as reading a book or learning a new recipe. Connecting with others, so making sure you're staying connected to others. So, for example, Scout Quest or being in Scouts, it's a great way you can all stay connected. Give, so giving back to others is great for your own mental health. So you can help your parents maybe with cooking dinner or helping a neighbour or even just a small act of kindness to a stranger. Be active is about moving our bodies and making sure you're being active active so this include you know gardening doing a dance routine in your living room so it's just about moving your bodies every day and take notice a big part of looking after our own mental health is slowing down and taking time to notice how we are feeling so you might want to do some meditation listen to music do mindful coloring it's all about being in the moment so these five ways you can do every day and if you do them all together they will help your mental well-being and also um help you feel good and happy and live longer, which is really good. So I want to challenge you all here today to do the five ways in the next week. So I want you to all write down the five ways and list in the next week what you do under each of them. So for example, today I would write under be active. I went for a walk with my dog and also under give. I gifted some cookies to my team at BCHS for Are You OK Day and I sent them to their house. So I want you to do that every day now for maybe the next week and write what you do underneath the five ways. And then I would like you to share with your scout group um, when you catch up next and share what you've all been doing under the five ways. So hopefully you can all do that and maybe make a goal or a challenge to do those. So thanks so much for listening to everything I've spoken about today. And we'll go into some of your questions that I can see you're putting through. Yeah, awesome, Siobhan. Um, thanks a lot for that. So we've got some awesome questions that have popped up in the comments section um, of this live event. Um, we'll just go through a couple of these questions um, and, yeah, go from there. So uh, we've got a couple of questions popping up like, um, is there a central contact number that people can contact to contact Headspace um, outside of the Bendigo region? Yes. So I might hand over this too. We've got lovely Haley here from Headspace Bendigo. So I've brought her in to answer some of those more Headspace related questions for you all. Thank you, Siobhan. So the best way to access the nearest centre to you is um, the website for Headspace. And go to the locator map and then you can put in where you are and that will bring up the nearest headspace center for you um, if you do have any problems ring any of the other centers and they'll be more than happy to direct you to the closest center if you are too far from a center to access they'll put you onto eHeadspace where you can still access support with the counselor Awesome. Um, and there's another question here. Um, is there a maximum amount of times that you can make an appointment um, as a young person to access Headspace resources? Yeah, so Pete, the, what they do, they'll do their initial intake appointment when you ring up making a referral. A lot of the centres do have a self-referral form which you can find on the website. Um, most of the appointments that you will have will be your first initial intake appointment and then depends on, um, you know, what you do need with your care and support, how many appointments you do have. And then what the clinician at Headspace will do, they'll refer you on to other services that are beneficial to help support your mental health and wellbeing. It could be social prescriptions that our GPs love to actually um, provide for you and that could be going to a gym so you're getting exercise and connecting with other people too so we've got GPs and counsellors but we're also aware of the other great things that you can do to help with your mental health and well-being so there's no limit to the appointments 
um, but we do look at you growing and utilising the skills and the tools that we provide you and we'll refer you on to some other places where you can actually help support yourself as well. We've got another question that's popped up here. Um, what other events throughout the year, similar to Are You OK Day, is there to promote um, mental health awareness within the community? Yeah, that's a really great really question. Great. And um, there's actually a massive, um, I guess, month, year and day coming up for mental health. So October is Mental Health Month. And there's also a week within um, October, which is Mental Health Week. And there's also Mental Health Day. And there's also Headspace Day within um, October as well. So there's lots of opportunities where we can keep continuing um, promoting mental health awareness. We'd love to stay in contact with you all and send out some information how we're going to celebrate Headspace Day this year. Wednesday the 6th of October is the day that nationally we all get together and celebrate the wonderful service. So we'll stay in contact with you all so we can stay connected and um, talk about the different things that we can do to celebrate the great service but also celebrate the wonderful young people that we have that we care about as well. Joanne really liked the post that you guys had up on the presentation um, and she's wondering if you can download it or print it. Yes, for sure. I will um, figure out a way that I, um, it can be available on ScoutQuest or on the Facebook. Um, I'll share that with everyone so you can download and print it and keep it for your own resource. Yes, definitely. Cool. Um, is there a way that a young person can get to a headspace centre um, if they're unable to get transport to a centre? Um, and is it okay if they take a friend in with them as well for support? Absolutely. If you can't get to the centre, we have telehealth uh, available so they can ring up and have a chat like this. So that's available all over Australia. If you haven't got a computer, we'll offer a telephone call for you. And we do encourage you to bring your family and friends along with you. We have a lot of connection with family and friends to support them and guide them through the, the support the young people need. But it's always great to bring a friend along because sometimes even with the first appointment, you could have the appointment and you'll walk out and you'll say, I've forgotten everything they've said. So it's always good to have a good mate there just to help remember everything and take down some notes for you. So we absolutely encourage that. Awesome. Um, and Rebecca's asking, um, are there resources that leaders of scout groups can use to support youth? Absolutely. Headspace National have provided amazing topics um, and their fact sheets that we do have. And we've also worked with a lot of young people to actually provide the information. So the information is youth friendly and inviting and it's very easy to understand. So we'll work with you guys. I'll send out all the information packs that um, we can have available but we'll also show everybody where you can access the information on the website. You can download all the fact sheets. Great. Um, and Wombat's asking, what mindfulness apps do you guys recommend uh, for youth to use? I, I can go for this one. Um, recommend using, um, obviously, the eHead Space um, Spaces could be one that you can download and use. Um, I think we have lots of resources there and Headspace also have the online mindfulness where you can sign up and register and they have guided meditation. There's also awesome. another great one called Calm and a lot, of, a lot of young people like to use that one as well. But we do have a, a sheet with a whole range of different apps available. So Wombat, we'll send them through to you so you can share them with everybody. Great. Um, Dan's asking, can a youth person reach out and ask for help if they don't have a parent um, for support? Absolutely. So we do encourage all young people to reach out, especially if they don't have parental support. Um, bring a friend along with you, as I said as well. All the appointments are private and confidential. But in the video, as you would have heard Lindsay talk about, um, it's all private and confidential, but if we feel as though you are at risk of harming yourself or someone else, we will have to intervene and get someone else to help support and guide along the way. Great. 
Um, Christy's asking how a young person can support a friend if they're going through a hard time. Yeah, so what we spoke about today, I guess, kind of covers that. So um, just being there and listening to your um, your friend is really important. Even if, um, you know, not much comes out of the conversation, just being, um, being there for your friend is a really great thing. But you can always encourage your friend to seek support from another person, whether it's an adult, um, maybe your, your scout leader, it could be a family member. It's just trying to get extra support um, in case you do need need that. Awesome. And for the last question, Savan, um, what can a young person do to support um, a peer um, if it's a very challenging situation? Yep. So, again, they could always refer to um, any of those um, support services. So you might maybe suggest that they go to Headspace and you might even suggest that they you go along with them um, to look at those services like Headspace or even Kids Helpline. Um, maybe doing that together could be a way that you can support your peer. Great stuff. Um, well, Savan, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Um, I think all the scouts this week should really go away from this live event and ask five friends or close relatives how they're going and if they're okay. Um, but once again, thanks a lot. And, yeah, we really appreciate you being on the live event. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Hopefully it was a good session for you all. Awesome. Thanks, everyone, for joining us tonight. This Saturday at 2 p.m., Scout Quest will be hosting Scout Ambassador Peter Hitchner. Make sure you join us for uh, what's it, what it's like to be behind the scenes of um, Channel 9 um, and what it's like to be a news journalist and what the career is like. So Peter Hitchner will be um, on for that live event to take all your questions. So make sure you're at the live event this Saturday from 2 p.m. Thanks, everyone, once again, and enjoy the rest of your day. See ya.